What's up guys? Here I am making another YouTube video. I am back and it feels really good. I just finished a huge batch of work. I got another huge batch of work in front of me, but first I need to make a big bait. I'm going on a fishing trip and I have, let's see, today's the fifth. I got about 10 days. This thing has to be like fishable ready in 10 days, which is not a lot of time. My time has been kind of I'm a, I'm a new father, my wife is pregnant again, so we're expecting another one, and uh, between that and work, the shop time has been really tough, just kind of sneaking out here uh, once everybody is in bed, and just working, you know, burning the midnight oil. I'm not complaining, it's great, but uh, time is hard to find, and I only have 10 days to make a bait for a fishing trip, so... Let's do it. Let's do this thing. Let's make another YouTube video. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to do my best to slow down just a little bit for you guys. I've gotten a lot of comments in the past uh, videos that I've done that the time lapse style that I like to do is can be kind of head spinning if you're really trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. I've always just kind of liked the time lapse style because I don't, I never thought people like to see, you know, every single stroke of the spoke shave or something like that. But we're going to slow this one down just a little bit. I'll do my best. I got to get this bait done. I laminated together a couple blocks of wood. There is a glue joint down the center of this block of wood. It is 12 and a half, almost 12 and a half inches long, three and a half tall, and about two inches wide. That's a good sized block for a about 12 inch bait. So I printed out my CUDA design. Basically it just fits on the uh, on this block so this is perfect. Basically I'm going to cut this out and glue it to this block of wood and then I'm going to kind of uh, determine my lip angle. So before I even glue it down I basically want to uh, establish the center line of the bait. So I'm just going to make a mark in the center, move this to the center, and I'm going to draw this line straight down the middle of this bait. I'm going to kind of establish a center line here on this block of wood. Now I'm going to cut my bait profile out. I'm going to cut it just a little large. You know, making YouTube videos is pretty hard as far as like setting up the camera, working around the camera. Like I would never be standing in this position the way I am right now, just trying to give you guys a better look at what I'm doing. I want this center line all the way to the edge of the block. That way when I line up my bait, I can line up both center lines. That's horrible. That's just about everywhere. Good. Alright, now I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. Then I'm going to start tracing stuff out on the bait. Kind of plan out my lip angle, my weight in hook hanger holes through wire channels and all that. We're gonna wait for this to dry real quick. On my sketch, uh, I kind of predetermined where I thought that lip was gonna go at the angle that I like to set it at for, for this style of lure. Now, I could change that, obviously. This bait, you can all, you could have something at this angle and have a, a longer lip to get like a deeper diving bait. Uh, you can get a little more aggressive for this size. I'm gonna go with an angle that I, I use basically on my other I have other baits and then I'm just going to kind of mark where that lip is going to be and I'm going to have those lines come up to the center line. So now that I got my lip kind of set in place and determined where that's going to come out of the bait and what angle it's going to come out at, I'm going to kind of just map out the through wire channels and the weight. You're going to have a through wire come out, you know, just behind the lip where it's going to come out and go up through the lip. So that's probably going to enter the bait right around here and obviously it's going to come out right out the middle of the back of the bait. So now I'm going to draw this line here. This is my main through wire channel. When you drill a hole to put this front hook hanger in, you kind of want a little bit of depth uh, where this through wire channel comes into the hook hanger chamber. So I'm going to kind of set this one back a little further than I would want. I, I kind of want a hook hanger maybe here. And uh, let's see if we got one there. They are going to be let's four and a half. So maybe right around here would be the middle between the tail hook hanger 
and the front hook hanger. So say right about there. This front hook hanger hole that I'm gonna drill is going to also serve as our weight hole. Since I want a little bit more weight than I usually use, I'm gonna kind of step up my Forstner bit. This is a three quarter inch, and I'm gonna trace that right up to the center line. I'm not necessarily gonna drill all the way up to the center line. That would probably be way too much weight, but I just need to achieve a depth a little deeper than the through wire channel. So the middle hook hanger is gonna be a thinner bit. Um, so I don't even know what this, this is a half inch. And this one has to go above that through wire channel. So this is going to be drilled all the way to the center line. So the way I like to cut lip slots is basically just with a cross cut sled, put the block in the cross cut sled. I have a bunch of these like pre-made angle holders and I'll clamp it to the cross cut sled, put the bait in like so. Then I'm looking straight down the lip slot and I'll put that lip slot right over the slot and I'll just know that that's gonna be nice and centered. I'll clamp this down with some clamps and run it over the blade. And then I'll kind of just creep up to the depth that I want to achieve. I'm not gonna go all the way to the, the midline, but I'll get pretty close. Uh, first things first, this feels very tight and just not uh, very slick. I'm gonna wipe this table down with some uh, mineral spirits and some boiled linseed oil and we'll get a nice glide on this. I don't want any of this friction here. I wanna be able to just kind of gently push it into the blade. Yeah, there we go. All right, I've decided I'm gonna swap out my blade because I want something with a thicker kerf because I've just realized that this is a bigger bait. I'm gonna go with the 3 16 polycarbonate lip and uh, this is just a thin kerf lip or a thin kerf table saw blade. I'm gonna swap it out for the uh, Woodworker 2 Special Cut Forest Blades, best blades on the market. So basically all I really need to do is just kind of look straight down this lip slot that I drew out and uh, just line it up and make sure that it's directly over the blade. These are clamped down and it looks like I'm ready to run this first pass. So there's my lip slot cut. Here's a piece of 3 16th polycarbonate and it's not quite big enough. So with this blade, uh, it is a thicker kerf, but it's still not thick enough for the 3 16th polycarbonate. So I'm gonna basically loosen these and then just kind of make a micro adjustment. Now that I have have the depth of the cut all set, I can basically just move this a little touch here and there until I can creep up to the full thickness and then uh, once, it, once I know that it fits, I'm good to go. So while it's still a block of wood, I wanna drill out these hook hangers here just so everything is still nice and square. Basically, I'm gonna set this up with the drill bit that I'm gonna use for the front hook hanger. And I'm gonna bring my eyes down to the level that I want the depth set to. And I'm gonna set that depth. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper than I originally marked. I think that's the amount of weight I want in this bait. It's hard to tell. It's so much wood. Now since it's a piece of wood that was glued together, I can basically just line up this Forstner bit with that glue joint. Make sure it's clamped to the squared fence. Right on the money. Okay. That one's done. 
and basically using the same process I'm going to set the depth again this has to be a little deeper we're going to go right to the center line Now it's time to cut it out. While that was still a block, I probably should have drilled out the eye socket, so I'm going to do that now. Just using this center line, I basically just need to determine where I want my tapers to be because I could start carving this right now, but that's just way too much wood to be getting rid of and keeping everything symmetrical. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of make some marks on the back of the bait, how wide I want the tail to be, make sure it's nice and centered, same with the nose, and then find out how far up the bait I want that taper to go. Do I want it here to, do I want to bring it all the way up here? Maybe a little further back, give it a fatter body. I'm gonna kind of determine that stuff out now and map that out on the bait. And then I can move on to setting up a tapering jig and cut those tapers off on the table saw. Okay, so basically with a tapering jig, you can have a little piece or a sliver of your workpiece hanging off the edge of this kind of long board that slides across. You basically clamp this down with these clamps and push it through and whatever's hanging off the, this edge is going to get cut off. Okay, apparently I wasn't filming that cut. Alright, my bad. Uh, it turned out good. It's a pretty good cut. All right, so drilling out these through wire channels can be kind of tricky. Um, normally I have, for my production models, I have uh, jigs that I've made that you put the bait into it and it's got drill bushings that guides these long bits um, into the bait. But uh, for this one and any other one-off bait, you just kind of have to eyeball it. Since I did map out the through wire channels, I do have this line here that I can kind of look down the bait and just kind of keep everything in line with this line here and in line with the center of the bait and basically just got to hope for the best on this one. So I'm going to start by basically just using a smaller drill bit to get the, the hole started. Once I feel like it's on line for where I want it to go, I'll switch over to this drill bit and I'll push all the way through. So I'm going to do the first hole here. We're going to go through this hole and I'm going to, my target is the middle of this hole, roughly three quarters of an inch deep into the bait. So wish me luck. All right, so looking at this bait the way it is, it's so thick across the back and I, I have a feeling that I'm gonna want to really narrow this bait from where it is. So while I still had a flat surface, I actually drilled my eye sockets a little bit deeper because I'm gonna be, I feel like I'm gonna be taking a lot of wood away from uh, this area here to kind of give it a, a, a perfect taper. Uh, slim this thing down just a little bit because this is so big and blocky that eventually I'm gonna need to get 
uh, a lot of this wood taken off. So I needed a little bit of deeper eye sockets and uh, I'm gonna just start hacking away and get some of this wood off of here. And a lot of this is just feel. There's no, you know, I'm not counting strokes or anything. I'm just start taking it down until it looks right, I guess. But whatever I do to one side, I'm gonna do to the other side, just to kind of keep it symmetrical as I go along. And that'll give me a better idea if I'm getting closer to where I wanna be. Obviously, I got a long way to go, and this might take a couple hours. All right, I think this turned out really good. I'm very excited about this. I think the thickness uh, is perfect for the length of the bait. It's a big bait, but uh, it looks really nice. So now I'm ready to carve the eye sockets. Uh, I'm just gonna take a Dremel tool and um, just kind of round over the edges of this eye socket and then kind of uh, scoop it out a little bit on the back side. It'll look like kind of like a like an egg shape around around the eye. That's what I like to do. Now well, let's get that done. All right, now that it is totally done, it's ready to be sealed. And then I'll drive a little screw eye into the back of the bait and hang it up overnight. I can hang it, but that's good. All right, now that the bait is all sealed up, it's time to make a lip. So I got this little sheet of uh, 3 16 polycarbonate, and um, what I'm gonna do is basically just, I'm gonna jam it into the, try and center it the best I can. That's all right, that's close. 
And I just kind of want to determine how long I want this lip to be. Um, at this angle, I'm thinking, I'm thinking right here. It's kind of long. Take that out. I'm going to draw this line straight across. It's pretty close to center. So this is going to be the center line of my lip. So now I have the center line and I have the length of the lip. Now I just kind of have to play around with the shape. I'm going to take a compass, draw maybe a couple of circles, play around with this for a little bit until I get a lip shape that I really like. I need to determine where the edges of the base of the lip are. So just measured this out is 35.58 millimeters. And this is going to represent the edge of the base. So I got my compass here. Typically I'll draw like three or four lip shapes on the lip and uh, just kind of see which ones look the best. So just going to draw a circle here, draw another circle over here. That's looking really wide. I'm just gonna draw a straight line out. Same thing over here. All right, so here is lip shape number one. That's really wide, really wide. I was actually just kind of looking at it in the bait and I was thinking that it's not long enough. Yeah, that's way too wide. I don't like that. That looks better. That's the shape that I'm going for right there. I increased the length maybe by, you know, a quarter of an inch here. We're just going to roll the dice. Sometimes that's what you got to do. This isn't something that I have time to prototype. I don't have time to make multiple lips and, and test these things out. So um, we're just going to uh, throw a dart at the board and, you know, maybe we'll get a bullseye. Maybe we won't. All right, I got my scroll saw out. This is how I like to cut out my lips. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice to uh, learn how to cut. It's kind of, it's not like steering a car, it's like steering a boat. The blade will lag a little bit with your turn. Once you get it down, it's actually not too hard. All right, so this is how it looks in the bait. Pretty aggressive, but I think that's kind of what I'm going for here with this bait. A lot of volume to, to have to move, and I think this lip is it's gonna get the job done, I think. It's big, but I like it. All right, so now I have to drill out the holes for the toe point, and then we're gonna just clean up the edge of this lip just a little bit with some sandpaper. And now that it is cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and scuff everywhere where it's going to be touching the bait. So I'm just gonna put it in there, kind of get an idea for how big that needs to be. And I'm gonna scuff it up with just the edge of some 220 sanding paper. And just to wire it up, basically, I'm just gonna take a stainless steel welding rod That looks good. Stick it into the front, feed that all the way through, side into the back hole. And then I basically just have a, a toe point depth little jig and I just push this down flat. And that's how tall I like my toe points. The one wire, and then bend the next one. Or this lip's ready to be installed in the bait. I like to epoxy my lips in with just this Loctite uh, one hour epoxy. And I'm just going to put as much of epoxy into this lip slot as I can.
couple of things that I just did off camera before I pour the lead. Put a rubber band uh, through this hook hanger. That's just gonna kind of hold it forward and straight while I pour the lead. That's gonna lock that in place. Then inside of the lead hole, uh, where the through wire channel kind of goes through that lead hole, I took some 20 minute epoxy. And it's more of like a, like it's not, it's kind of like a cream it's as opposed to like a runny gel. So I just kind of put, plug, clogged up the holes inside that so that the lead doesn't run down the through wire channel as I fill it up. And then also I put it into the back of the through wire channel, plugged that up so I can pour epoxy into this hole and fill up the through wire channel uh, from here to here and from here to here. So when I fill that up, it'll run down and it'll get stopped up here and it'll get stopped back here. So I let that epoxy fill cure overnight and then I topped it off with some one hour epoxy just to give it kind of a smooth surface. Normally I would just use the same epoxy that I used for the fill but uh, I wanted this to just kind of go a little faster and it's going to work out just nicely. I'm, it's all set up now, it's not cured so that's still going to need overnight to cure for me to um, maybe sand it smooth but that's good enough for now. So now I'm filled up from uh, the tail to the weight hole all those channels are nice and filled and it's topped off which is great and now I'm going to um, I'm gonna twist up this uh, tail hook hanger and then I'm gonna flip it around I'm gonna prop up the front and I'm gonna fill this wire channel here with some epoxy we'll top that off and um, then we're on to pinning the lips but first we gotta fill this up And now I'm going to drill a couple of holes in through the nose, uh, through the nose, through the glass, back into the wood. Um, and then I'm going to epoxy in some stainless steel to pin this lip into place. And now it's time for some epoxy. So I'm going to mix up a cup of epoxy and paint it on the bait, put it on the wheel rack. And uh, by this time tomorrow, I'll probably give it a good sanding and prep it for paint.
So after two coats of epoxy, it's ready to prep for paint. So I put my eye socket bit back in the drill press and I'm going to just kind of clean out the eye socket and get them nice and flat again so when I install an eye, it's a nice flat surface to epoxy the eye to. And then we'll sand it down with some 400 grit sandpaper and then I'll tape the lips off and uh, hit it with some primer and prep it for paint. All right, I got my lip taped off and a coat of primer on there. This thing is ready for some color. So that's that's exciting. I love painting. Painting has become my favorite part of bait making for sure. I got into it for the woodworking, but I love the, the creative side of painting. And once you kind of get the hang of things, it just becomes more and more fun. I'm going to be using a lot of golden products. That's, the, that's my favorite paint. I feel like golden makes the highest quality of paint for running through an airbrush. I'm going to start with a yellow base. All right, so next up I'm just going to take some basic cheap acrylic paint and I'm just going to dab it all over the back of the bait and, and sides of the bait, maybe almost three quarters of the way down towards the belly. And this is just going to give it a little bit of texture before I put the scales on. I'm going to be kind of blocking you a little bit, I'll try not to. Next color is called chocolate brown. All right, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit more chocolate brown and I'm gonna add a few drops of black to it to get a really nice dark brown and then that'll be color number three. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of black as well. Next I'm gonna take a little sapia and put it in my airbrush and I'm gonna just darken the back up a little bit, just right down the spine, maybe a little bit onto the shoulders. I'm gonna put on this mesh. All right, that feels good. I'm gonna start by spraying a little iridescent bright gold. I want the scales themselves to be layered, so I'm going to spray a little bit of this uh, Nickel Azo Gold by Golden, and that's going to kind of give me a little bit more color over top of the gold. And this time it'll be just a touch of gold just to give it a little bit of flash on top of that nickel.
And now I'm going to come back with the sapia and I'm going to try to darken up the front side of each scale by spraying it at an angle. Pretty much the same thing you just saw me do with the nickel. All right, I'm feeling good about these scales. And now I'm gonna take some transparent black and give it some bars. It doesn't take a lot of paint. I like the transparent because I like to be able to see the scales through the bars. I don't like when the like an opaque black covers up the scales. I kind of want to see those scales underneath so I like the transparent black for my bars. I like to use these uh, stencils for my gill plates but it's just not quite big enough. I need something that's going to go all the way to the underside of the bait. So I'm going to see if I can make my own stencil template. So I just had disaster strike. That was absolutely terrible. Oh my gosh. So I started to use this stencil material that somebody recommended to me. It's something that you can put into your Cricut machine and cut stencils out. I just freehanded something real quick and stuck it to the bait. And when you peel this off, it actually doesn't feel all that sticky. It's a little sticky, but you know, not. it's just kind of tacky. And uh, I thought that would be great. And uh, I put it on the bait and it stuck to the bait and took all of the paint with it. So what you're looking at right here, it took paint from here all the way over here. So this whole area right here was just white. I pulled all of the paint off of it. So I basically went back to step one and just in this section painted scales put some put the bars back on and blended it back in and I'm, I'm actually really happy that it turned out okay uh, it may maybe if I didn't point it out to you you would never have known but man that was that stopped my heart there for a second what a disaster that could have been and it even pulled off a little bit down here and uh, I don't know I'm gonna have to blend that in I, I want to put fins and gills on this bait, but I don't have tape that's wide enough to make a stencil. I thought this stuff would be perfect. I don't want to risk doing that again unless I coat this whole thing in epoxy. That's an option, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and put a quick coat of epoxy on this. We'll come back and finish up with the fins and gills and then some eyes and more epoxy and then we will finally be done with this thing but my gosh it it looks good it looks good but geez all right that looks much better much much better i can't believe that patch job worked out that great i am very very happy with that what a nightmare that was but we are ready to move forward with fins and gills let's try this again
<laughs> oh, look, baby. No, can't touch that. No, can't touch that. Here, scissors. Some scissors. Yeah. Here we go. And then yeah, she's yeah, yummy. Yeah, Waves yeah. them up and down. Right in the mouth. How about this? How about that? Wow. Wow. Look at that. Oh, it's more scissors. Good. In fact, there's nothing over here you can touch. Whoop, whoop. So last night I uh, was thinking about the eyes that I was going to be needing today and I actually have a mold for eyes. I normally buy 16 millimeter eyes from Dead Meat Customs and um, I used a larger bit for the eye socket. So I'm going to have to make my own eyes. So I poured a handful of these size eyes which should fit my eye sockets just nicely and then I just epoxied them down to this foil paper it looks messy now but I'm gonna trim these up and uh, they should be a perfect fit maybe a little bit too small but that's that's okay there they are they look pretty good came out alright nice and shiny I'm gonna go ahead and put these in
Uh, all right, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you stuck around this long, I really appreciate you watching this video. Man, this thing turned out so great. I'm so excited to fish it. The action was awesome. Um, I think it's gonna hold speed pretty well, but just a fun bait to build from A to Z. And uh, I hope you took something from the video, and um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Wish me luck.